Welcome to Jesus is Lord Ministries. We do hope you'll enjoy the service. These are just highlights of our Sunday service. And we do hope you sit back and enjoy the video and be blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, for your love, your patience, your kindness towards each and every single one of us in this place, Father. We thank you, Lord, for your word, your almighty, all powerful word that will deliver, set free, Father God, that will open the blind eyes and the lame walk and the deaf ear and the oppressed and the depressed, set free, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, those that, that need provision, Father, you will provide for every single one, Lord, emotionally, spiritually, physically, mentally, Father God, that you will provide all their needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus, Father. We thank you, Lord, for this week, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that there's a new week starting, Father, a new beginning, Father God. And we just thank you, Lord, that we can, every one of us can get excited about what you're about to do in our lives, Father. We know change is about to come. We expect it, Father, in Jesus' mighty name, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that the lost will be saved, Father. The sick will be healed and restored, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for Pastor Bob, Pastor Bethel, Pastor Lindy, Father. We thank you, Father God, for all those people that have gone to other places, Father. Basil and Lindy, we love you. We pray for you daily. We pray and we miss you so much as well. But thank you, Father God, for every precious person in this place, Lord. We just thank you, Lord. You'll provide all their needs and our needs according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus, Father. We thank you, Lord. It is a new beginning, Father God, yes. as our hope, our source, our trust is in you. You will not fail us, Father. You will restore every broken area in our lives, Father God. And we just thank you for that right now. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray for Pastor Bob when he delivers the message this morning, Father. It will set the captive free, Father. Yes, the blind eyes will open, the lame will walk, the deaf will hear, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for the gift of healing, gifts of uh, knowledge and words of knowledge and uh, of, of um, um, the gift of discernment, Father God. We just thank you for that right now in Jesus' name. Father, those crying out to you this morning, Father, you've heard them and you will deliver and set them free in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Father. And it's not about us, it's all about you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We glorify your holy name in this place, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in His hearts above. Amen. Praise Him, all the angels. Praise Him, all the heavenly hosts. Praise Him, sun, moon, and uh, praise Him, uh, all you shining stars. Praise Him in the highest heavens. Praise Him uh, and you waters above the skies. Let them praise the name of the Lord. For He commands and they were created. He set them in the place forever and ever. Thank he gave you. a decree that will never pass away. Praise the Lord from the earth. Amen. You great sea creatures and you ocean depths. Amen. Lightning and hail, snow and clouds, stormy winds and all that, and that do his bidding. You mountains and all you hills, fruit trees and cedars, wild animals and ca all cattle, small creatures and flying birds, uh, kings of the earth and all the nations, you princes and all you rulers of the earth. Young men and maidens, old men and, and children, let them praise the name of the Lord. For the name of the Lord alone is exalted. Amen. His splendor above the earth and the heavens. Amen. He has raised up for his people a horn, the praise of all his saints, of Israel all the and the, uh, of Israel and all the people close to his heart. Praise the Lord. Father, we praise your holy name in this place, Father God. 
and we thank you. Let's give God glory and Amen. honor this morning. Let's thank him for Amen. his goodness. Let's thank him for his precious son that went through so much for each and every single one of us. We thank you, Father. We glorify your holy name in this place, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Satan, I bind up every foul devil demon spirit, Amen. every hindering demonic Amen. devil demon spirit, yes. every demonic force of Jezebel, destruction, yes. control, yes. manipulation. Yes. We bind you from this place and cast you into other darkness. We will have no return. In the name of Jesus, Satan, your works are brought to naught by the power of the blood of Jesus. Lord, we glorify your name in this place. We love you, Father. We love you, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, Father God, for thank your goodness. You, we thank you for your provision. We thank you for our healing and restoration, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Praise Let's God. give God of our very, Hallelujah. very best in Jesus' mighty name.
the plain. the bread and he said this is my body which is broken for you now let me just tell you while we take communion this morning while we eat of this bread and we drink of this juice that represents his blood that was shed for your salvation now is a good time to get healed now is a good time to receive the peace of the Lord now is a good time to be set free Let's hold up the bread. Father, we consume your body. And we believe that we receive healing. And we receive restoration. In Jesus' name, let's eat together. And then the cup, the cup of grace represents the blood shed by Jesus for your salvation. We didn't deserve salvation, but God planned it for us because he loves us so much. So let's consume and drink of this blood. And I believe that there's other people here today that have either got troubled minds, troubled hearts, or going through a difficult time and going through a storm at the moment. And God makes us certain promises with regards to storms when we go through them. Hallelujah. And what I'm going to do today, I'm just going to share with you what I do or what I try to do when I'm going through the storm. Because we have to show God faith and trust in Him and not in the storm. In Hebrews it tells us without faith it's impossible to please God. In Matthew chapter 14 and verse 22 it says immediately Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he set, sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away he went up on the mountains on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there. But the boats with the disciples in, it was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves. For the wind was contrary. The storm was brewing. The storm was starting to toss the boat around. And that's how it feels when a storm is coming into our lives. When we're laid off from the job, when we get a sudden unexpected financial demand come to us, whatever it is, 
when we have a disagreement with a loved one, whatever it is, the storm is starting to brew. Verse 25, though, in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on the sea. You see, the storm was brewing, the wind was contrary, but Jesus went to them, walking on the sea. He didn't have any doubts. He didn't have any fear. He was going to his disciples and he was walking on the sea even though the wind was contrary. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled saying, it is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, be of good cheer. It is I, do not be afraid. Then Peter answered and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, come. And that's what he's saying to you today. He's saying, come to me. In other places, he says, come to me, all you who are heavy laden. Come to me, all you who are troubled, and I will give you rest. In John chapter 14, he says there, let not your hearts be troubled, for I go to prepare a place for you. Verse 20, so Jesus said, come. And when Peter had come down and out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. He came down, he got out of the boat, and he started to walk towards Jesus. He was looking at Jesus. He was walking to Jesus. The wind was blowing, it was contrary. But he was focused on Jesus. Jesus had said, come. And Jesus had said to you, come. We're going to the other side. Yes, amen. It's a promise of God. Amen. God is not a man that he should lie. Amen. If he says, come, we're going to the other side. We are going to the other side. But when Peter saw that the wind was boisterous, he took his eyes off Jesus. He saw the wind was boisterous. And he was afraid. Fear crept into him. And beginning to sink, he cried out saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. You see, Jesus, he's not afraid. He has no fear concerning any storm in your life. He's already rescued you. He's already saved you. Hallelujah. He's already paid the price for you. Hallelujah. He's gone to prepare a place for you. Hallelujah. And he's left us with an identical one to him, Hallelujah. the Holy Spirit. He's left him with us. Hallelujah, Lord. But we're in a world. We're in a fallen world, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> And we have to face circumstances. <coughs> we have to face circumstances. In Matthew chapter 12 and verse 37, Jesus said, For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Mm -hmm. By your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. You see, we can use words of death, of negativity, of fear, of failure, of defeat. Or we can use words that line up with the word of God of victory. Hallelujah. We can use words that an overcomer uses in Jesus' name. We can use words of faith, positive words. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Listen, this is for somebody here today. Be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. But in all prayer and supplication, make your request known to God and the peace of God that surpasses. You can't understand it. That surpasses all understanding. Well, guard your heart and guard your mind. That's a peace of God. 
Now the first thing I'm always careful to do when I'm facing a storm is to start changing the circumstances. We have to change the circumstances. And how do we change the circumstances? With the Word of God. I've got a note in the back of my Bible here. And I want to read it to you. I've, I've used this notes many times when I've taught on the Beatitudes that I was teaching on last week. But I want you to hear it today. Do not allow natural circumstances and conditions to affect your spiritual welfare or emotions. Spiritual emotions. Oh, sorry, spiritual outlook. Many Christians allow adversity to badly affect their spirituality, to affect their attitude. And your attitude and your confession and testimony eventually become negative. You talk, it, you talk yourself into a negative place, into a negative place into a negative situation. You feel the pain. You go to the doctor. I phoned a guy yesterday and I knew he'd gone in to have a biopsy done and, uh, and I thought he would be home and so I phoned him to find out how he was and what was the result of his biopsy because we've been praying for him over the last couple of weeks. And he said to me, I'm still in hospital. He said, I nearly went to the other side. This is how he talks. He's not born again like us. I nearly went to the other side. When they did the biopsy, they decided to do a biopsy on my prostate and there was complications. I wound up in ICU and then in high care and then yesterday they put me back into the normal ward and the doctor said that maybe tomorrow or on Monday I can go home. He said, my wife nearly lost me. He said, I nearly died. And I thought to myself, but what words? If you're alive, you're alive for a purpose. Amen, amen. You can allow your natural circumstances or conditions to affect your spiritual welfare. Your spiritual welfare. Now, what are you doing? There's this worldly saying, under you see somebody you haven't seen for a long time. Hi, Fred, how are you? Well, under the circumstances. Fred, what are you doing under the circumstances? The circumstances should be under you. You should be in control of your circumstances. And how do we control and change our circumstances? With the words that we use. With the words that we speak in Jesus' name. Remember what he said. He said that for, but I say to you that for every idle word that men speak, they will give an account for it on the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. You see, I've got, I don't know if it's in this Bible or my other Bible, my old study Bible, which is in a, a terrible state, because... I'm using it, I write in it, I, I study in it, and uh, in Jesus' name, hallelujah, mm -hmm. hallelujah. But I've got there, under the scriptures pertaining to sickness, and under the scriptures pertaining to lack, mm -hmm. I've written down, I've changed those words, where there's sickness, I've got written there, but God has made me whole, mm -hmm. but God has healed me. Under lack, but the Lord is my shepherd, and mm -hmm. I shall not lack. I change all those things so that when I read them, I'm not reading the negative side, I'm reading God's truth, God's side. And I can change whatever circumstances come upon me. The circumstances that came on my wife, she was facing death, and the doctor said to her, it's not good, and she said, doctor, all is well. She changed the circumstances just with those few words. Doctor, all is well. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. If you're going through a situation of lack, 
or you can't pay the rent or you can't pay the bond or the school fees or something like that. You, used to, you need to be on your knees. You need to be yes. walking up and down your house yes. and you need to be yes. confessing and yes. speaking. Yes. My God yes. shall supply yes. all my yes. needs no. according yes. to his riches no. in glory yes. by Christ Jesus. Yes. My God delights Hallelujah. in the prosperity of his saints and I'm one of his saints so he delights in my prosperity. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 You need to first start changing the circumstances by controlling word your God. words, Hallelujah. the words you speak. Hallelujah. And if it's difficult, sip it. You, Keep quiet about it until the Holy Spirit reminds you of what God's Word says. Mm. And you start speaking God's Word out. Mm. Keep speaking His Word out. That's why Jesus said, from the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. Mm. So that's why we need to be in the Bible. We need to be studying the Bible. We need to be feeding our spirit man on the Bible all the time. So that when storms come, when we need supernatural recall, it just comes and it just flows. Out of the belly will come rivers of living water, the word of God. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Now listen to me. So we can change our circumstances with our words. That's the first thing that we need to start doing. When somebody talks to you negative about the financial situation, when the doctor speaks to you, you know, our other doctors, they're already used to us. Doctor, can I pray with you? Mm -hmm. And we pray with them. That's right. So people, people, especially family members as well, if they come and say something to you contrary, something that's of fear, something that's of lack, something that's of doubt, whatever it is, immediately replace what they're saying with a positive word, a word of faith. Well, I don't know how we're going to make it this month. I don't know how we're going to do this. I don't know how we're going to do that. Hey, 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 hey. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. My God's going to supply all our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Faith is acting on and speaking what you believe. When you speak in the circumstances, often it's fear and doubt. Mm -hmm. But faith is acting on and speaking what you believe. What do you believe? Whose report will you believe? I will believe the report of the Lord. Then speak it. Speak it out. Speak it all the time. In Jesus' name. You see in Proverbs chapter 18 and 21, verse 21, it says that life and death has its power in the tongue. Mm -hmm. And those who speak it, let me just check it out there. Those who speak it shall eat of its fruit, I think it says. Maybe I'm wrong. Let's just check it out quickly. Yeah, and those who love it will eat its fruit. So you're going to eat the fruit of what you speak out. You're going to eat the fruit of what you're saying. You know, I knew a couple many years ago, they're both in heaven now, and uh, they, were, they were born again believers, but they were struggling in their marriage. And show. Sure, so many times they would have these big fights and we would get involved. It was a family member and we would get involved. And she often, she used to say, I wish I was dead when they had the arguments. Yeah. I wish I was dead. She went to be with the Lord at the age of 32. Oh, 37. 37. Yeah, 36, 36. Yeah. Because she kept on saying, I wish I was dead. Mm -hmm. I wish I was dead. God gave her a wish. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. What I wanted to say about that couple was that often I sat with them, and uh, Lee was with me most times. I sat with them, and how many times did they speak about divorce? Mm -hmm. They never got divorced. But I know pastors okay. that have got divorced. Mm -hmm. I've heard them say, Divorce is the only way to solve this problem. It's a lie of the devil. It's a lie of the devil. God hates divorce. Mm. Can I tell you why God hates divorce? God hates divorce because 
he sees the church as the bride of Jesus and Jesus as the bridegroom. And if we study the word, maybe one day I'll, uh, the Lord will release me to, to teach you on it, but if we study the word, the word our, our marriage, our marriage in, in, on this earth is a portrayal and a picture of the marriage of Jesus and the church. If you study the word, you will see it. The Holy Spirit will show it to you. It's a shadow of the marriage between Jesus, the bridegroom, and the church, the bride. And they can never, ever be separated or divorced. Because he hates it. He hates betrayal. He hates anything that would separate, cause separation in Jesus' name. So, thank the Lord. I can't even remember the last time I ever heard the word divorce other than a ministry in our house. Praise God, we leave it. It's banned from our house. It's banned from our house. Death is banned from our house. Amen. We will only speak life over Amen. death situations. Amen. Amen. Light over darkness. Light exposes the darkness. Light, you flick a switch, and light puts darkness out of the way immediately. But you have the power of life and death in your own tongue. You can go home and say, oh, the doctor said it's terminal and I've got to get my affairs in order and this, that and the other. Or you can go home and say, I didn't get a good report, but I don't believe that report. I believe this report. And I believe I'm healed in the name of Jesus. So, what I do, I try to change the circumstances with my words first. Then I try to make sure that we are communicating, my wife and I, and anybody that's close to us, communicating life words. Mm -hmm. That we're acting and speaking on what we believe. Unless you don't believe it. Unless you don't believe it. And if you don't believe it, you've got to examine yourself. And you've got to ask yourself. Am I born again? Maybe you're just carnal, a carnal Christian, a, a baby Christian, a Christian that's just come to the Lord. And you're still learning these things. That's what you need God's grace for. That's what God's grace is all about. God's grace is not so that you can have a, a jolly good time while you're swapping and going to parties and dancing and stuff like that because I'm saved, hallelujah, and God's forgiven me my, my future sin. Where's the repentance? Listen, repentance opens is the key that opens the door to forgiveness and grace. Yeah. While we're talking about that, that brings me to the third point. Forgiveness and repentance are so, so important when you're going through a storm. Because people will speak to you and will hurt you. Can hurt you deeply sometimes. And upset you. But you've got to forgive them. You've got to learn to forgive them. And to forgive a person is not just necessarily me now going and living in this one's pocket. Or, you know, because I've forgiven them. It's, I'm polite with them and I speak to them as if they never sinned. And, and when the devil tries to accuse them in my mind, then I turn around and I find the word of God where God loves them too much to leave them the way they are, but forgiveness and repentance, they are so, so important. In Mark chapter 11, Jesus was speaking to the disciples, and he said, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you'll speak to this mountain, but you mustn't have any doubt in your heart, no fear. And then he says, and you tell that mountain to be from there to there, maybe that mountain's lack, maybe that mountain's sickness, and you cast it into the sea, get it, get it in Jesus' name. Don't speak to the mountain about your problems speak to the mountain about what God says and God tells you to tell that mountain to be removed in Jesus name debt be removed sickness be removed unemployment be removed Amen. in Jesus Amen. name Amen. you must speak to that situation Amen. but after Jesus has spoken all about that Matthew 25 and 26 and Jesus said and whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive 
your trespasses. And I just believe, I've been believing this now for a few weeks. There's somebody in here that's holding a terrible grudge against somebody from the past that's hurt you so deeply. And God wants you to forgive them. God wants you to forgive them. You see, they're walking in repentance. And we get this idea that repentance is always walking along saying, Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, I've been a dirty, rotten sinner all my life and all the rest of it. Listen, there comes a time to stop all that stuff. Because else Jesus went to the cross in vain for you. There comes a time to forget all that. And to say, I am forgiven and I've forgiven that person. In Jesus' name. But the person that we find so hard to forgive often is number one, yourself. You have to learn to forgive yourself before you'll ever receive or, or, or feel God's forgiveness in your life. And the only way you can forgive yourself is really through true repentance. Having a change of mind about your lifestyle, having a change of my, mind about the way you've been walking, having a change of mind and deciding to do it God's way instead of my way. Hallelujah. Well, God is the only way. Right. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life in Jesus' name. So you need to forgive and repent. I'm going to go through them again with you. you. You must change your circumstances with your words. You must speak life, life in your tongue and leave the death part out because you will eat of its fruit in Jesus' name. And then forgiveness and repentance are so important. Then the fourth one that I always try to remember in Jesus' name, and usually this is a big one, the devil will try and fill you with fear, but you've got victory in Jesus. You've got victory in Jesus. You don't have to walk in fear. You don't have to wake up at night full of fear and all the rest of it. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 says there, For God has not given me a spirit of fear. Fear is a demon. For God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Fear is in an unsound mind. If you've come to Christ, Christ is making you sound in your mind. Your spirit is born again. You're being transformed by the renewing of your mind into a sound mind. And then when you go, when, 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 the, the, when you go to heaven and when Jesus comes back and uh, he'll raise up all the dead bodies, physical bodies that is, and we will all put on new uh, incorruptible bodies in Jesus name then the last part the last part is found in Luke chapter 7 you can find it in Matthew chapter 6 I think as well but in Luke chapter 11 verse 9 and I want to spend a bit of time with this and then maybe if there is time, we will look at another example. Luke chapter 11 verse 9 says, Jesus is speaking. Now Jesus, not the disciples, not Pastor Bob, but Jesus our Lord and our Savior, Emmanuel, God with us. He said, now I'm explaining to you and saying it to you like this because we read it and we often forget who said it to us. God says, so I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And he who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. Now, when you, if you could read that in the Greek, this is what it would say to you. So I say to you, ask and keep on asking. Seek and keep on seeking. Knock and keep on knocking. It's an ongoing situation. And Jesus is telling us, don't neglect to do that. Don't neglect to ask. Don't neglect to seek. 
and no, don't de uh, neglect to knock. And sometimes we get lazy. You see, the devil, he puts fear in you and he will put lethargy in you and he will make you tired so that you don't feel like asking, so that you don't feel like seeking, so that you don't feel like knocking. Listen, Jesus said, if you ask, he'll give you, you'll receive. If you seek, you have to do some seeking here. You have to go and look for a job, which he wasn't doing. And if you come across a door that's closed, knock, and it will be opened. To cut this long story short, to cut the long story short, I went around with another guy from the prayer meeting to Spiro's house, and I asked to speak to this couple and their family. It was on a Friday, and I said to them, I'm coming back on Monday. If you're not out of here, there will be trouble. You see, if you're not going to obey God's word, then you're going to have to face the consequences. You're going to have to face the consequences if you do obey God's word. But those consequences will be good consequences. If you don't obey God's word, you'll have to face the consequences and they will be bad consequences. They will be bad consequences. I'm laughing because I'm just thinking the end result was they got a furniture removal van to come late at night on that Friday night to pack up all their things and to move them. And then uh, the next day in the evening, yeah. so they must have gone far, the removal guy comes back and he says to Spiro, they said that you're going to pay for it. Oh, <laughs> 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 so Spiro had this big bill to pay and we all tried to help him <laughs> to get through it <laughs> in Jesus' name. So what I'm saying to you is whatever situation you're in, ask, seek and knock. If you're going through a time of marital problems, take it to God. Take it to God. Be anxious for nothing but in all prayer. And supplication, make a request known to God. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and guard your mind. In Jesus' mighty name. So you can take it to God. You can ask God. And you can seek God. If you can't deal with it yourself, go and seek wise counsel, the Bible says. Go and seek your pastor. Go and seek an elder. Go and seek somebody who's wise. Somebody who's mature as a Christian who's not going to take sides, who's not going to give you worldly counsel, but somebody that's going to give you godly counsel. And when you start knocking, that door will be. In Jesus' name, Lord God, we love your promises. Your promises of life. Life eternal. Your promises of living forever and ever in God's kingdom. Your promise is that you meet our every need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And as we've read this morning, Lord, your promise that if we seek, we will find. If we ask, we will receive. And if we knock, it will be open to us. I love you, Lord. How I love you, Lord. You are my God. You are my Savior. my shepherd I shall not lack and he promises us we will never lack if we hold fast to his word let me ask you a question this morning it's the same question that the Bible asks where does your help come from? 
Where does your help come from? Yes. That's it. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's truth. In Jesus' name. That's truth. In Jesus' name. And Psalm 73 says, Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is none upon earth that I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever and ever and ever and ever. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' powerful name. That while you sat there and the Holy Spirit has been ministering to you, if you're going through a storm, listen, it's up to you. You can go home and go back to that storm. Or you can go out of here knowing that we've asked God and God will undertake your every need. And we can change the circumstances with words of life. In Jesus' name, but it's up to you. God says, we have said before you, life and death, blessing and cursing. Choose life, he says. Choose life. If you're going through a storm today and you need deliverance, you need help, in Jesus' name, and you want me to come with you to the throne room of God, and to take your request to God and you can go home with his peace in your heart and in your mind and you need to get out of that seat that you sat in and you need to come down to the front where we can minister to you in Jesus' name in Jesus' name oh hallelujah oh hallelujah just told me when I was singing you are my Lord and the Lord said to me just tell them I am their Lord and I'm not to be ignored in Jesus name he is our Lord and he is not to be ignored not in any way in Jesus name in Jesus' name, praise God, praise God, hallelujah, 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 blessed man, in Jesus' name, heart for God, in Jesus' name, so many ups and few downs, but I'm talking about hills and mountains. Father God, we come before you now. I come with Bethel. Whatever troubles him, Lord, I know that you will take care of. Lord, but I know he has many years of life ahead of him. He has many years of service to you ahead of him, Lord. He has many years for the anointing to increase, increase, and increase in Jesus' name. So, Father, I come with him and I ask for peace. And his life, Lord. Lord, pour out into his heart what he needs. And I know he'll receive it. And those closed doors, 
will, will be opened and remain open in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. What is the problem? Is it what you spoke to you about? In Jesus' name. Father God, I just thank you, Lord. Your name is Jehovah Jireh. And you are our tedious provider. You're our provider. In Jesus' name. And I just speak prosperity over her life. I thank you, Lord, that her needs will all be met. Because your word promises us that you will meet all our needs. And I know, Lord, that you're her shepherd. And you will meet her every need. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What can we go to To the throne room of God and ask him for you. Tempe. What is the problem? In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, your word says, if she asks, she will receive, and you heard her words, she's looking for a job. And I know, Lord, if she seeks, from the moment she seeks, in the morning, she will find. And when she knocks on that door, she will find favor with them. And she will receive in Jesus' name. And we thank you for it, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Your grace is all over her. Your grace fills her, Lord. Your grace fills her mercy for the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Sabrina, what can I pray for you for? For your family. Father, you just heard my precious sister. And she's seeking for her family, Lord. And you know the needs of her family. You know her every need, Lord. And I thank you, Lord, to take care of all those needs. Father, just like that prison warder, when he asked Paul and Silas, what must he do to be saved? And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus, and you and your household will be saved. And I thank you, Lord, that because of Sabrina's belief in the Lord, her family would all be saved. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name, did you come to the front? I'd really know because in Jesus' name. Father God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you for the gift that Lindy is to us and Bethel with their singing and their music abilities that they share in this church, Lord. Father, and I thank you for the wisdom as well, Lord, that's built up in them over the years. But Father God, I know that you're Lindy's shepherd, and she shall not lack anything. She shall not lack anything material. She shall not lack anything emotional. She shall not lack anything health-wise whatsoever in Jesus' name. Your word says, Lord, that you will meet her every need. In Philippians chapter 4, it tells us to make our request known to God. And the peace of God that, per, that surpasses all understanding will guard our hearts and our minds. So guard her heart, Lord. Guard her mind. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father God, increase the anointing in her life. In the mighty name of Jesus just feel that you've been through, you and Bethwell have been through so much recently and you're both spiritually trained and maybe sometimes you're saying things that you shouldn't say because of that spiritual drainage and that's how the devil works and I bind you Satan I bind you from this household in Jesus name, you will lose them in the name of Jesus and Father God I thank you the anointing your word says, I can do all things through Christ. I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. 
And we know it's that anointed through Jesus, the anointed one and his anointing. It's that anointing that strengthens us. So increase the anointing greatly in Bethel and in Lindy, that they be strengthened in the mighty and awesome name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 What can I call with your legs? In Jesus' name. Father God, I mean, we love this guy so much. He's our grandson. But how much more do you love him? How much more do you love him, Lord? And your word says that when an earthly father gives good gifts, and his birthday's coming up soon, Lord, as well, so we know he's going to get good gifts. But how much more will the Heavenly Father give him? And so we pray for his knees, Lord. And as your word says that he's already been healed, that those knees will grow stronger every day in Jesus' name. Lord, that you give him the desires of his heart in the mighty and awesome name of Jesus. And Lord, while he's here, when he goes away on that leadership camp on Wednesday, I thank you, Lord, he'll be an example. He'll be a light shining in the darkness. And Father, they'll see the potential the same trend to the Lord. And Father, I know he's got great potential for your kingdom. And I thank you for that, Lord. I thank you for that, Lord. So we come to you, Lord, and we ask. And we believe in asking. We receive. And we seek. And we believe that when we seek, we find. And Lord, I believe you've already opened the door already opened the doors in Jesus mighty name in Jesus mighty name hallelujah hallelujah God is so good in Jesus name in Jesus name God is so good hallelujah finally I want to encourage you I think every single one of us in this church and many more outside have been under a, a great attack in everything that tried to come against us. But you know what? We have to do something. We have to stand and believe God's word. We have to confess his word. We have to take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And we have to slash everything with the sword, the word of God that comes against us. We can't sit back and just receive and accept what the enemy's told us. He's lied to us. He's trying to rob us. He's trying to do all sorts of things. He's trying to do all sorts of things against us. He's trying to rob us of everything. But we're not going to accept that in Jesus' mighty name. You know, there's a very powerful um, scripture, uh, Psalm. But I want you to, in your uh, quiet times with the Lord, even if you have to do it, go st stand outside in the garden. Go and confess God's word and go and receive what he has for you. <clears throat> Psalm, Psalm 118. <clears throat> Give thanks to uh, the Lord for his good, his mercy endures forever. Let Israel say his love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say his love endures forever. Let the fear of the Lord, let those who fear the Lord say his love endures forever. In my anguish I cried to the Lord and he answered me by setting me free. Who's been in anguish this week? Cry out to the Lord, he will set you free. Don't be afraid of, of anything. The Lord will work on your behalf in Jesus' mighty name. The word says, the Lord is with me, he's my helper. I will look in triumph on my enemies. Better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. Better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. All the nations surrounded me. What's surrounding you today? Sickness, disease, poverty, anxiety, fear, uh, fear, uh, no, all sorts of things, lack. What is surrounding you in the name of Jesus? But in the name of the Lord, cut them off right now in Jesus' name. Satan's got no power over you. Confess his word. Rebuke him in the name of Jesus. Take the fight, the good fight of faith, the word of the Lord, and confess it over your life. It doesn't matter how he's pulling you down. Take the word of God and rebuke Satan in the Thank name you. of Jesus. Thank he has you. no power over Thank you. you. But in the name of the Lord, Hallelujah. cut them off. Cut those things that are surrounding you. 
They're pulling you down. Hallelujah. Cut them off in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. With the power of the blood of Jesus. Go into your spiritual warfare. Go Thank stand you, outside in the Thank garden. Don't do it in your house. Whatever Hallelujah. you want, God's already given it. Go. We have to fight the fire of faith. We have to receive what Jesus. God has given us. What peace He's given us. We have to accept it. We have to accept His word. He's Thank our shepherd. Lord. We shall not lack. Our purses might have been empty, but Thank call you. them full. Call your work in. Call the, the, the door. Call, call the open door in for yes. you. Receive your jobs. God, start jumping around and like a mad thing, thanking God for what He's given you already. Amen. You've already received it Amen. by faith. Accept it. Hallelujah. And the faith of God is on every yes. single one of you to receive what He's Thank given you. Jesus. So accept. Yes. There will be testimony next week singing, Look Amen. what the Lord has Amen. done in Amen. Jesus' Amen. mighty Amen. name. Amen. The favor of God is on every single one of you. Don't think you're too little or not too great. The power of the blood of Jesus is more than enough for you. So receive that. Receive your healing. Receive your deliverance in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hi, everyone. Hi. Church is good today. Amen. Amen. It's excellent. Um, there's a story um, I'd like to share with you guys today um, about how to actually survive the storm. Scientists believe, or as we like to know, that when animals, animals sense a storm is coming, what do animals do? They hide. But there's one animal that does not hide, that runs to the storm. That's a buffalo. When a buffalo is, senses a storm is coming, they run to the eye of the storm. Scientists believe and have discovered that the worst part of the storm is actually on the outside. But they also believe that buffaloes run into the storm that they get through it quicker than the other animals that are gone to hide. And I believe God wants you to know that you must run into that storm and do not hide. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Just cruise the service. So expect breakthrough. Expect your prayers answered. Keep on confessing. Yes. Keep on thanking. Keep on spending time with the Lord. And rebuke Satan. Because he'll be at you like this all the time. He'll be nipping at your heels. Oh, that's what the Word of God says. He's going to nip. He's going to try. But he won't succeed in Jesus' name. He is a defeated foe. No weapon formed against you will prosper in the name of Jesus. Accept the Word of God. Accept his provision. Accept his healing. Accept his goodness and his kindness and his faithfulness and his mercy. Accept it in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. You've been watching this on the video this morning. And you need prayer, contact us, first of all. But the best thing that you can do today is to first give your heart to Jesus. Amen. 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 So just put your hand down. Just say this short prayer after me. Say, Father, Father I'm in a storm. I'm in a storm. That only Jesus, that only Jesus can get me out of. Can get me out of. And I've decided. I have decided to become, to become a believer, a believer in your way. In your way. And I'm asking Jesus, I'm asking you, Jesus to come and call me. To come and call. To walk, to walk on these stormy on waters. The stormy waters. In, Jesus in Jesus' name. name. I believe. I believe. He is your son, he Father. He is your son, Father. And I believe, I believe he paid the price he for my salvation, for my and salvation. I, believe I believe that I am saved, I am saved. in Jesus' in Jesus mighty name. Name. Amen. Amen. In Jesus mighty name. Father, we bring every precious person in this book before you. Yes. Father, the Murrays, the Stanchys, the Karaskis. Yes. Father, um, we bring um, uh, Raymond, we bring um, uh, Andy before you, Father. We bring the, the doctor's mother before you, Father. Yes. We bring... Uh, Apostle and his family before you, Father yes. God. We thank you, Lord. You've got a plan and purpose for every single one of them, Father. We just thank you for that right now, Father. We thank you, Lord, for broken lives will be healed and restored. Broken marriages will be healed and restored, Father. Father, we thank you for employment for these people that have cried out to you, Lord, that the doors are open, that all they have to do is walk through and receive. Walk through and receive in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 That the Lord bless to keep you, make his face shine upon you, turn his countenance towards you, and give Amen. you peace in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Till the next Amen. time. Amen. Amen.